Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to kick off a South Korean craft beer mini series for you, and I'm really looking forward to this because I've heard some really good things about the beers coming out of Korea these days. So I'm filming for you currently in Jeju, just the little island off the kind of southwest of South Korea, and um, it's really pretty here. And I did manage to pick up a few really good craft beers. So for this one, we're going to go to one of the craft breweries in South Korea that's you know really well regarded. This brewery is regarded as one of the ones who really kind of kicked off the whole craft beer scene in fact. So we're going to go to Magpie Brewing Company and we're having a taste of their IPA. So this one comes in at 6.5% and uh, I did actually try this earlier this evening. I was in a restaurant with my girlfriend and uh, we managed to have a look at this one which was, uh, was pretty nice I have to say. So I'm looking forward to doing a more kind of in-depth sit-down review for you for this. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one and I do hope that you enjoy the South Korean mini series that will come up over the next couple of videos for you as well. A big shout out to Josie at Josie's Beer Shop and I, I did a little beer shop visit video at her store as well so I'll put the link to that in the description below and also the link to her Facebook page as well. She's got a ridiculously good selection of craft beers and she was the one who helped me pick out these uh, Jeju and other Korean beers for you so make sure you come and visit her shop if you find yourself in Jeju. But anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Magpie Brewing Company I do have two more other beers that I'll review for you fairly soon there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there will be one there for all the South Korean beers that review for you and hopefully I can add to that fairly regularly over the next couple of years and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Magpie Brewing Company then so Magpie Brewing Company were founded back in 2011 and they were originally based in Seoul and the four people behind the company were Eric Moyahan Tiffany Needham, Jason Lindley and also Shabbat and I wasn't able to find out Shabbat's surname in all the articles that I read. I think he may well be the fourth silent partner in the company just now. But all three came to Korea as English teachers. The three active partners came to Korea as English teachers. Monihan is from Canada and the others are from the US. But apparently Eric and Jason really wanted to develop a kind of do-it-yourself lifestyle, you know, self-sustainability and all this kind of things. And they've done, you know, various different things such as cheese making and they also own their own restaurant together as well which is called Scout in Seoul and it's meant to be pretty good actually but around 2006 or 2007 Jason got into home brewing and then the three guys got really quite deep into this hobby but they apparently also had a TV show for a period of time which was called semi-permanent and this looks into the lives of uh, you know, foreigners living in South Korea and uh, this aired on the Arirang network and this company also owned the, the building which the brewery is now housed in here on Jeju. But in 2012 they opened up their brewing space in the Kyongridan uh, area in Seoul with a paleo and then the porter followed later on because they wanted to show how well the, you know, what a dark beer really could be but most of their original beers were paleos but they've continually expanded ever since they opened back in around 2012. For a while they had been contract brewing their beers with other breweries such as The Table, um, Seven Brow and also Cab Brew as well just simply to keep up with demand. But later though they opened up their new brewery in an old tangerine warehouse on Jeju Island in the tiny village of Don Ho Chiong if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I do apologise if any of these Korean pronunciations are wrong which they probably are. But in addition to this they've also got a bar in the Itaewon district in, uh, in Seoul and previously also had one in Hongdae as well. But they also have their blue bar bar in Tapdong in Jeju City as well which you can go and check out and I'll see if I can get there before I leave Jeju in a couple of days. But they also offer beer tastings, brewery tours and also home brewing classes in each of their different locations from what I understand. They now have Mike Romeo as their head brewer. He previously worked for Fano Breukers uh, in Denmark. If I remember correctly that's on Öland. I'm very close to that to, uh, to, to 
Skeland rather, which is the island that has Copenhagen on. I can't remember exactly where Fano uh, Brukus is, but he also worked for Left Hand Brewing over in Colorado as well. And they like to basically play with local Jeju ingredients in the beers as well, such as the peppercorns and uh, and they've also got oranges, tangerines and things here that they like to play with too. But as of July 2019, they've produced over 60 different varieties of beer and the brewery is apparently named Magpie because this is regarded as you know a symbol of good luck in Korea and the birds are kind of regarded also as the sort of bringer of good news as well so they kind of use that in their marketing and say that you know we are the bringers of a uh, good craft beer to South Korea and stuff like that so um, yeah a really interesting company this one these guys you know I don't know if it's fair to kind of term them the brew dog of South Korea or something like this you know the sort of gateway brewery um, for a lot of the the different things so you know you can probably compare these guys to the likes of Paula from uh, from Estonia you know the Estonian brewery that everybody knows uh, Brewdog from Scotland and uh, you know a Fierce I guess or the other one back home in Scotland and Omni Pollo and stuff like that but uh, in Sweden too so yeah an interesting brewery this one and one of the, the better known craft beer names if you like from South Korea so it's a very good place for us to start with this uh, South Korean mini series but yeah that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment if you want to learn a little bit more of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well and um, yeah you know check out uh, Josie's craft beer shop too and I'll put the link to her Facebook page down in the description below as well again a huge thank you to her for pointing me in the right direction when it comes to these uh, these magpie beers but yeah you know really nicely presented this one it, it does have that kind of Asian vibe to it which you would want when it's uh, when it's Korean of course there you can see the nice uh, Hangul there I used to be able to read to the different characters of Hangul. I need to refresh it, but of course my focus with my girlfriend being Japanese recently has been more on uh, learning kanjis and stuff, which is crazily difficult. The Koreans used to use that, then they developed Hangul, which is a much uh, easier system and, you know, very clever actually. But um, yeah, you know, really nicely presented this one, quite minimalist, but still really quite uh, quite an interesting design on it. So yeah, like I told you at the start of the video, this one is a 6.5% IPA. They're telling you on the side that this one is quite piney, and this can and instantly is a 500 milliliter, a half liter, rather than one of these kind of 440 tall boy things that you get out of America and stuff like that. But yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Yeah. So, as you can see, this one's poured a really nice kind of golden straw colour actually. It'll look a little bit darker in the glass right enough. And this is a nice half litre glass actually that I got from Jing Man Brewery over in uh, over in Hong Kong. But yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice kind of bright gold, more of a golden amber rather than anything else. You can see there's a solid finger and a half of a kind of bumpy. Um, I would say cream coloured head on this one, it might just be the light in here, this is one of the th problems I'm having with filming beer reviews in Asia, the light that you get in the rooms is not the brightest and um, yeah, it's a bit frustrating actually, but yeah you can see a really nice kind of pale, uh, not pale, sort of more a rich ambery golden colour this one I would say, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know overall it looks pretty good and you know nothing surprising about this one when you consider it is an IP you will always get IPAs that are this kind of nice rich golden amber colour but one or two big bubbles sticking up towards the side of the glass and you can see a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there the head incidentally has just faded away to a bit of a nice kind of half finger of a more kind of frothy foamy type thing but yeah let's take a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer oh yeah that smells quite nice I can tell you straight away from the aroma and from having tasted it earlier, this one is more of a West Coast IPA. You can see that from the appearance. It's not one of these big hazy New England things. Hopefully I'll get to try a few North, um, a few Korean uh, New England IPAs at some point. Um, that would be really nice to try. But yeah, this is a really quite nice... It smells like quite a well-balanced beer, this one. And... Um, you know, straight away you're going to get a little bit of that kind of bready malt in there. There will, will definitely be some pale malt in here. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of an American two-row malt in there, just going by the aroma. But it's got that nice sort of white bready quality to it. There's a little bit of a biscuity note to it as well, some slightly richer caramel, maybe even sort of slightly toasted as well, I would say. Um, but yeah, pretty kind of straight up in its malt base, nothing particularly surprising about that. Um, but it blends in quite well with the fruity side of things as well. So there's a nice little bit 
of a sort of floral, grassy kind of thing coming out of there. I wonder if there's a little touch of uh, of German noble hop in here. There's also a little bit of an earthy herbal quality coming out of this one too. So maybe there's a little bit of a of, of English hop in here to be honest with you, which is is kind of interesting. It does have a little touch of earthiness and a herbal quality too as well. So maybe there's a little th maybe a little bit of Kent Golding or something like that in there. Or uh, it's not quite strong enough to be Fugles, but maybe a little touch of a, a Kent Golding or something that would be interesting. They could of course just be using some local ingredients here from Jeju. I think you've probably got a good climate here to actually uh, to grow hops. Um, but yeah, definitely a little bit of an earthy kind of herbal thing going on in this one. Um, you might of course get that, it might be some of the things coming out of the yeast that they're using too. You find that in some of the New England IPAs that are coming out, some of them are using yeast that give you this vegetal herbal kind of thing in the background. So it does have a little bit of that vibe to it as well. Like I said though, it's definitely a West Coast IPA. Um, but some nice sort of grassy and floral notes in there too. A little bit of fruitiness. Um, if we're trying to term the fruitiness, to me this one comes across as being pretty kind of straight up and uh, grassy. It's got, definitely got a little bit of that slightly lemony citrus. There's maybe a little touch of the kind of darker tropical fruits like grapefruit or uh, or something like that in there. Um, but you know it's a pretty straight up kind of old school smelling IPA for this one and for me um, I would think, if I was guessing hops, I think there might be a little touch of uh, of Cascade or something like that in here. Um, so, you know, I'd be curious to know what one's in there. I'm not getting so much of the piney resins coming out of this one for me. It does smell a little bit more floral and aromatic rather than being straight up piney. I, I don't think there's like Chinook or something like that in this one to give it that. I might be wrong right enough, but I always like playing Guess the Hops with these different IPAs. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience when it comes to craft beers. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we got on. This one is the Magpie IPA from Magpie Brewing Company here on Jeju in South Korea. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, Gombe. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, this one, interestingly enough, it actually reminds me of one of the first Swedish craft beers that I ever tried. Um, it reminds me a lot, actually, of um, the India Tribute from Oppigors Brewery. It really has a little bit of that sort of English IPA vibe to it as well. So in some ways, you know, it's got a little bit more... It says on the can that it's 60 IBUs and you will get that straight away. I mean, most of these New England IPAs and stuff that are coming out now are sort of 25, 30, maybe 35 at a push. So this one does have a little bit of that West Coast bitterness that you want. Um, but there's something just about the malt base in this that makes it come across as being slightly, you know, a slightly English IPA. So it's, it's kind of interesting that. It's a little bit of a hybrid, this one. But that really works for it, I have to say. Let's get the last little bit of that into the glass then. But yeah, this is a really kind of, this is really is quite a nice one I have to say. Um, it really does remind me of that India Tribute beer, uh, the IPA from Oppigord's Brewery in Dalarna back in Sweden. But yeah, straight away, what you're going to notice with this one, right across the middle of your palate, you'll get that nice sort of bready quality there. It really does have that kind of lightness of crisp malt. I, you know, that, that sort of light kind of crispness of pale malt. I suspect there's maybe a little touch of Pilsner malt or something in here because you do find that the centre of your palate just has an, an edge of crispness to it and it, it, it it's nice. I mean, when you're in a place like Jeju, it's quite tropical. I mean, it's quite warm. They do want to have their beers with that little bit of drinkability in there, so you know that's understandable. And I found the same with the Japanese and the Hong Kong craft beers; they did have that element of uh, you know crispness and drinkability to them, and you can understand why in uh, Asian climates where it's predominantly quite humid that they will want to have that with their beers. But um, yeah, as I say, a little bit of white bready quality, some kind of pilsnery malt type notes in the centre of the palate too. I'm also finding that as I take more and more of this, it's got a little bit of a You know, it does start to get a little bit sweeter as well. Um, in the very centre of your palate, that's where you'll pick out the slightly kind of caramelly and biscuity notes. In the very centre of your palate, it does have a little touch of a caramel 
quality to it. But as you move further out from the centre of your palate, it does gradually get a little bit more kind of grainy and biscuity. There's almost a little bit of a kind of toastiness to some of those grains as well. So the middle of the palate is quite interesting and it, it is a kind of straight up sort of old school IPA if you like but um, it does have a good little bit of complexity to it as well which is, is pretty nice so on the hoppy side of things uh, back corners of the palate you're getting a little bit of earthiness I think I would revise my statement perhaps of uh, you know English hops have been used in this one um, the earthiness isn't quite as dark if you like it's quite it's a bit of a lighter earthiness so I think probably this is more American hops that have been used in here from the aroma though it really did have quite a sort of herbal kind of quality to it it's just interesting how the, the aroma the taste can actually be quite different but yeah there was a little touch um, of a more herbal quality in the in the aroma of this one but in the back corners of the palate it does have a nice little bit of earthiness and as you come further forward along the the front kind of sides of your palate you get a little bit more of that sort of the, that kind of floral aromatic note and to me it's quite spicy I do wonder if perhaps going from the earthiness and the spiciness that you have in this one if they've used Columbus as a bittering hop you know I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case just going by this one because it does have that, that nice sort of distinctive spiciness that you'll get from uh, from Columbus. Round the front curve of the palette though, it's just a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my opinion. And then behind the front curve of the palette, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And this one again, this is where it's kind of quite old school. Yeah, I suspect that this one, I do think that they're, they're using Cascade in here. Um, and I'm finding that that sort of, the earthiness from this beer and some of the graininess actually, it does have a little bit of that sort of herbally, uh, not, maybe herbal is not the right word, a little bit more grainy vegetal kind of sort of undertone to it that's pushing its way out. And I suspect that's coming from the, the yeast in this one just because of where the flavours are coming out. You can just feel it sort of underpinning the whole malt base of the beer. And usually the yeast and the malt bases, are that that's kind of what you're getting in the middle of your palate. And the more you drink of it, the more you're getting of that. But the fruity side of this beer, again, is, is quite interesting. It's mainly for me a sort of straight up, quite dark um, grapefruit. So, I mean, it could be a couple of things. So, um, I think there might be a bit of cascade in here. There could be a little touch of uh, Chinook because, in fairness, the floral aromaticity that's coming out of this beer is quite dank in nature. So, it could be a little bit of Chinook that's, uh, that's in here. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. So, I think if I was betting on the hops, I would think maybe Columbus, Chinook, Cascade. I think maybe those three might be the ones that in it. I'd be interested to know. I'm not. I wouldn't pin my colours to the mast on that. But it's always just fun to play against the hops with these beers a bit. But you know, if you like your old school IPAs, you know, for example, if you like the likes of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale or something like this, if you're watching in Europe, um, Opie Gourds. Uh, India Tribute is a good one. I'm trying to think what else would be quite widely known. You know, some of the you know the, the Shehalian Lager back home in Scotland. The you know it does have a little bit of the kind of hoppy character from that too. Um, but yeah, this is it's really nice. And as a kind of if you consider it as an old school kind of IPA type beer, then it, it does kind of tick all the boxes. They've done a good job of that, and it's a well crafted beer. And so you can't really fault it. Uh, you can't really fault it at all, actually. So big thumbs up to the guys at Magpie Brewing Company for this one. And it's cool to try another very, very solid beer from a different country in Asia. I do like it how the craft beer bug is spreading over here. I was quite well versed in the craft beer scene in Japan. I've saw, seen quite recently how good things are over in Hong Kong just now. And, you know, this certainly uh, sets a good benchmark for South Korea going forward. So I'm interested to try the other beers that I've got from Magpie and, uh, and the other breweries to review for you as well. So, yeah, I really nice um, just old school IPA and um, in terms of my uh, sort of statement earlier that I made about this being a bit more of an English IPA you do get a little bit of that Englishness out of it because of the graininess and stuff like that that you get in the center of the palate but the hoppy side of this beer is a bit more distinctively American to be honest there is that bit of earthiness in there to be to be fair to it but in some ways it, it definitely leans a bit more towards the American side of things so it's a bit more like an American hopped version if you like of that India tribute it does have a little bit more of a bite to it um, but I like this one and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink 
it again. So yeah, have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. And let me know where in the world you're actually drinking this beer. I'd be curious to know how far afield South Korean beer is actually making it these days. Because yeah, I've not even seen these in Japan or in Hong Kong actually. So let me know where you're getting a hold of these beers. So in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this one then, I describe this beer as being at the sort of bottom end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth on this one. The beer does have an element of crispness to it. As I mentioned, I found that that, that seems to be a kind of recurring theme, if you like, when it comes to Asian craft beers. I suspect just because of the temperatures and the humidity and stuff you have over here. Um, this one, uh, the mouthfeel overall, it's got a little bit of an oiliness to it, but again, you know, the crispness just kind of shines through. Uh, there's a good bit of hoppy bitterness here. It tells you on the can that it's 60 IBUs, so it does have a bit of bite to it. It's not going to blow the head off you compared to some of the IPAs and things like that you're going to get. The malt base has a good balance between being a little bit sweet in the centre, and it dries out quite a little bit and becomes just that touch... Uh, you know, a touch more grainy, and there is a little bit of that kind of um, juicy, fruity quality for me, and mainly the fruity side of the beer is leaning towards a kind of grapefruity sort of thing. Like I said, I suspect, uh, you know, maybe Chinook or uh, or Cascade in this one. It does remind me a little bit of the old Sierra Nevada Pale Ale in terms of its um, in terms of its fruitiness and hoppiness and stuff like that. But a really, really nice beer this one, and it's cool to review. Uh, you know, a beer from a brewery in South Korea that's really well regarded. So let's just leave it at that for this one. A really solid beer. And it's cool to try my first beer for you from Magpie Brewing Company, especially when I'm here on Jeju. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my take on this one. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. As always, please let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Magpie Brewing Company as well. You will see me review another two of their beers over the next little while in this South Korean mini-series. But I thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you guys very, very soon. This one is the IPA, or the Magpie IPA, I should say, from Magpie Brewing Company, coming in at 6.5 percent from Jeju in South Korea. Really nice beer this one. A little bit of an old school IPA. So if you like the Sierra Nevada, the Sierra Nevada Paleo or the Opie Gord's uh, India Tribute, those are the two beers that this one particularly reminds me of in fact. So yeah, let's leave it at that. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you try out this one and I hope you enjoy this little South Korean review series going forward. Slanjun, skull, gombe.